ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Avengers Endgame 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. And yes, today is finally the day we're going to be taking a look at none other than the Iron Man Mark 85 from, of course, Avengers Endgame. Now, I've been incredibly excited. This has probably been the number one Iron Man figure, at least on paper so far, for me, I love the color scheme and I love the design. I cannot wait to get this guy out of the box. Now, of course, like some other Hot Toys releases, this one isn't without its controversy, and we'll get to that a little bit later. Now, I picked up mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link, of course, for that is in the description below. They do have 12-month installment plans now available if you're a fan of paying off your figures over time. Also, while you are down there, why not hit that subscribe and bell notification icon so you're notified as soon as brand new content goes live on the channel. What we are going to do now, though, is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. And here, of course, we have the box art for the Mark 85. It's done in a very similar fashion to the other figures in the line, which, of course, does make sense. Except with the Mark 85 here, they've taken it a step further and added this beautiful metallic finish to the front of the box. I really like the way it looks. Honestly, I haven't been a huge fan of the artwork on the previous boxes, but this one really does work for me. Now on the side you can see Iron Man Mark 85 and some legal information on the back. Now this being one of the newer diecast style figures, you do have the slip that comes off the front there versus the older style one which had the cardboard in two separate pieces. I much prefer this way of doing it, it just makes the unboxing experience a little bit more pleasant. Now you can see the beautiful black styrofoam Mark 85 on the front there. Now as I said previously, this does have a little bit of controversy, and it all comes down to that piece right there, which we'll be taking a look at in much more detail in the very next clip. But here we have the Mark 85 himself, and I have to say, initial first in-hand impressions, this guy is a weighty boy. I'm feeling a lot of die cast, especially down here at the feet, and I'm loving the metallic finish. This thing is glossy and beautiful and chock full of tiny little details throughout the entire thing. But let's take a look at the other stuff in the box. You do have a couple of accessories on the top here and of course a tray down below. So what we are going to do now is get all of this stuff laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. And here we have all of the accessories that come with the Mark 85. Now, as you can see, he doesn't come with a hell of a lot of stuff. It's pretty much slim pickings here. But for me personally, most of the value goes into the figure himself. He's an all-new sculpt. He's chock full of die cast, chock full of beautiful paint applications and a hell of a lot of engineering. So for me, that's where I see the value. It's going to have to be up to you whether or not you can rationalize spending a little bit more and getting a little bit less. Now let's start off by taking a look at the display base first. Don't worry, we'll talk about that in just a second. Honestly, I love the way this looks. It's the hexagonal style Avengers Endgame Glossy A with this beautiful arc reactor in the background with the red and gold. Iron Man printed on the front. I kind of wish that said Mark 85, but that's fine. I'm willing to let that go. And see, Hot Toys, you can do it. You can give us the smaller hexagonal style display bases, but also include the dynamic flight pole. I don't know why they always insist on giving us those big honkin' diamond style display bases when this literally proves it. A Hot Toys figure can be held in the air by a smaller display base. We're willing to put in the work to get it done. You have to get the center of balance just right so he doesn't topple over. But trust me, this in my opinion takes up far less space but achieves the same end result. Now let's take a look at the lightning refocuser. I love the way this looks. It's a big honkin' starfish. It plugs onto his back. This is, of course, what Thor uses to zap Iron Man, and then he uses that blast to shoot at Thanos. You will see this on the figure a little bit later in the video. I love the way it's painted. It's super glossy and super sharp, and the sculpt is excellent. 
there aren't any moving pieces, unfortunately. I kind of thought they were going to be up the top here, but there isn't. Unfortunate, but still, this is a really nice accessory and kind of an iconic moment in the film. I would love to have Iron Man posed up with this on the shelf if it wasn't so incredibly large. Now let's take a look at the gauntlet itself. I have to say, I'm super glad that they included this. They could have saved it for the Mark 85 battle damage figure. And yes, a lot of people would have been mad, but eventually they would have come around and bought both versions, as I'm sure a lot of people are doing anyway. But Hot Toys said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to include it in the box, and I'm glad that they did. This thing is gorgeous. There is so much detail. It's chock full of it. It's super intricate and super ornate. And of course, it does light up. You can see there is an LED in the little bottom wrist section there. So that means that when you connect it up, it does have actual connectors on the inside here, just like the Mark 50, which will illuminate the hand. Thank goodness the LED isn't somewhere up in the arm and has to shine all the way down because it would look quite horrendous. But not this time. They put the LED in the hand itself. You will see that a little bit later in the video. Now just before we talk about the head, let's talk about the other hands. They're pretty straightforward. You can see this guard on the back, you do have the movable finger hands, and you also do have the repulsor style hands. I honestly wouldn't have known that there was some gold detail underneath, because usually this panel comes over the top here, so I'm glad that they've revealed a little bit more detail under that section right there. Now let's talk about the thing that has ruffled a hell of a lot of feathers, and it's this head sculpt. Hot Toys have done something kind of unprecedented and have announced that they will be replacing it with this one right here. This is the head sculpt from the Mark 50. In my opinion, between these two, it's an instant win for the Mark 50. It's a gorgeous head sculpt. We've seen it a bunch of times before. It's tried and it's true and I love the way it looks. Obviously, this new one does have a really nice paint application and the detail is fairly good, but who is it supposed to be? It's not Robert Downey Jr. surely because I don't really see it from some angles like right there. Yeah, I can tell who it's supposed to be. From front on though, it really does lose me. I don't know why they decided to go with this one. There have been, if you count them, three different head sculpts shown for the Mark 85, this one being the last. I don't know what was wrong with the previous two prototypes that they decided, nah, you know what, this is the one we're going to go with. Because in my opinion, this is definitely the weakest out of three. It says something if you have to go ahead and swap it out with the previous release version, because that one was stronger. The newest should always be the best if you're planning on continuously improving your methods and your sculpting. This just far and away has a too thin jaw, the nose is slightly too long, the hairline is far too receded and too round. You can see with this one, it's a lot more square and the jaw is a lot wider. It just really doesn't do the job, in my opinion. Now, does it warrant all the hate that Hot Toys were getting? No, I honestly don't think it does. Bear in mind, there are actual people working on these sculpts. They're putting their hard-earned time and effort into making these as good as they can. They're actual people. I do want to stress that. So all of the hate that they've been spewing online towards these people at Hot Toys, unnecessary. You can express your opinion without having to spew hate. So do just be wary that you are actually insulting and sometimes hurting people's feelings, the people who make these fantastic works of art. Yes, sometimes there's a misstep like this piece right here, but we do still get absolutely fantastic works of art like this guy right here, and thank goodness they are swapping it out going forward. So just bear that in mind. Now, of course, you do get the neck sort of collar section that you can use either with this new one, which is a nice touch, or you can use it with this one as well. So you do have the option to use it with the original one that came with the Mark 85. It's crazy to call this the original and this the new one when technically Technically, this one is the older of the two, but yes, you can still use it with this one or the Mark 50 slash new Mark 85 head sculpt. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to actually be keeping this head sculpt. You may be asking why when this one is clearly the superior of the two, but it's because I already have this head sculpt. I don't have one of those, and in years to come, it's going to be quite hard to come by because, of course, Hot Toys are swapping out the head sculpts for those that are being released in the States. Therefore, as I said, it's going to be a little bit rarer, so that's why I'm personally going to be keeping mine. But yes, of course, I do agree this one is by far the better of the two. What we are going to do now, though, is get the Mark 85 himself out here and take 
a closer look. And here we have him, standing straight up and down the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And there's no two ways about it, that's the Iron Man Mark 85. And just, wow, I am super impressed with how good this guy looks. I wasn't entirely sure, and honestly, the excitement had kind of faded for me. I told a lot of people, not all that excited about the Mark 85, but give me heavy Mando, and yeah, I'm gonna be jumping for joy, but now opening this guy up, the MCU love has been reinvigorated. This guy is absolutely gorgeous. He's chock full of die cast, chock full of detail, and the paint applications are gorgeous. Also, in my opinion, I think this might just be the most advanced Iron Man figure in terms of engineering. He is super sleek and super flush, but he also has a bunch of tiny little bits and pieces which can move. But having him just standing there, you probably wouldn't believe me, because as I said, he looks just that darn seamless. And that's the key. They've done a lot of work to get it to look as good as it does. And in my opinion, for the figure itself at least, it's definitely paid off. You'll have to let me know what you're thinking of this guy so far in the comments below. What we are going to do now though is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. And here we have him up close and personal and honestly I have to say I'm pretty impressed. I mean what is there not to love about a die cast Hot Toys Iron Man figure? They've pretty much got this down to an art. At this point, they've done so many Iron Man figures, and this being kind of their final one, I know they're probably going to make more, but they've taken all of their learnings throughout the years and poured it into this guy to make, in my personal opinion, and by no means do you have to agree with me, the ultimate die-cast Iron Man figure. Let's talk about the paint First, this guy is covered in beautiful paint. He's got this super glossy punchy red all throughout, and then this satin finished gold with this pitting effect all over. That just brings the entire thing to life. It's what, in my opinion, was missing a little bit from the Mark 50. You can see it on the red sections here and there as well. He's just chock full of detail. The Mark 50 had some, don't get me wrong, but this guy has far and away more, and he looks so much more realistic for it. I do appreciate that Hot Toys have taken all of, as I said, their learnings and applied it to this guy right here. Now let's talk about the light-up effect. You can see the eyes are illuminated quite nicely. Nicely, so too are the teeny tiny little miniature arc reactors dotted around the place as well as the big central one. But that's not all, on the back there are even more. Now there are some on the legs here, but to activate those lights you have to remove this entire side panel. It doesn't really want to come off that easily, so I opted not to light them up. But yes, there are some lights on the hips there if you wanted to turn those on. I will be showing you the actual gauntlet lit up a little bit later in the video. Now let's talk about the design of the Mark 85, now translated, obviously, into 1-6 scale glory. I initially wasn't too sure about the design. It looked a little bit more alien, kind of like the Mark 45, but now having had the benefit of waiting and seeing and seeing it a few more times on screen now, by all means we've seen Avengers Endgame a bunch, I kind of have grown to really like the design of the Mark 85. It is super sleek, but they've peppered in the gold in the right places to make this kind of the ultimate comic book but film version of Iron Man. It's a really nice looking suit of armor. Is it my favorite all time? I'll have to let you know a little bit later in the video, but so far it definitely is up there. Now let's talk about the diecast distribution. So far most of the diecast i found is in the legs. This guy feels super sturdy down here from the actual thigh down to this lower part here. This is pretty much entirely die cast as far as I can tell and I love the way it feels. This guy is super weighty, super sturdy and honestly just look at it. It looks absolutely fantastic. Don't worry you will see the lightning refocuser a little bit later in the video. Now this being an Iron Man figure he does have a couple of moving pieces. Notably on the back here you can see the air flaps can actually move. They aren't really the most crazy in terms of showing some hidden detail underneath but there's a tiny bit there and I do appreciate that they threw that in. Now just like pretty much every other Hot Toys Iron Man figure you can remove the chest plate 
kind of unnecessary because as far as I'm aware, just like the Mark 50, this is nanotech, so he wouldn't really need to have that sort of mechanical detail underneath, but you can do it if that's something you'd like to show off. Now in terms of the actual silver sections, I do want to talk about them for just a second. They pop. They look beautiful. It's this sort of cross between silver and gunmetal. You can see how reflective it is. It just picks up the light and it has this sort of ethereal, deep sort of look about it and it's peppered throughout the entire thing. It's honestly one of the most eye-catching suits of armor that I've ever seen and I can't really put my finger on why. It's a fairly basic suit in its execution. There's not a ton of super sharp and jagged detail throughout. He's not super bulky. He's really crisp, really clean and sleek. But honestly, this paint scheme is really working for me and I'm loving how it comes together. Let me know what you think of the Mark 85 down in the comments below. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have Nebula from, of course, Avengers Endgame standing alongside the Mark 85. And I have to say, I'm really liking the way this looks. I cannot wait to bring out even more figures to continue the comparisons because this guy kind of just works no matter which setting you have him in. There's something about the Mark 85, he may be, yes, a little bit too tall and he may be a little bit inaccurate in terms of especially at the thighs having those little gaps there to allow for the articulation, but you just forget about all of those little bits and pieces when you have him standing alongside the other Avengers, something just clicks and standing alongside Nebula here, this really does just work in my opinion. Next up here we have the Mark 50 alongside the 85. These two have some similarities, yes I can definitely see them, they're both very sleek futuristic suits of armor, but the Mark 85 just has so much more detail in terms of the engineering and the paint applications. The Mark 50 is no slouch, it's a beautiful suit of armor as well, but there is just so much more weathering and pitting here and there on the suit for the Mark 85 that just makes it look all the more realistic. They're both amazing, but in my opinion the 85 is starting to edge out the 50 for me, just a little bit. Next up, here we have the Iron Spider from Infinity War, and I guess technically Endgame as well. Next to Iron Man, this just works as well. He's a little bit shorter. He should be. Tom Holland slash Peter Parker is a smaller dude compared next to a big honk and Iron Man suit. This just makes sense. I'm really liking how this looks together. I do have two Iron Spider figures, so one will be displayed with the Endgame figures and one with the Infinity War figures, because technically I think you kind of have to do that. You can't not have an Iron Spider in your Endgame display. It was the big moment where we got the culmination of all of those years and films in the MCU. Now we can have all of our favorite characters on the same shelf. And honestly, these two standing together, in my opinion, looks absolutely awesome. Next up, here we have Hawkeye, aka Ronan, aka Clint Barton. One of the other figures which for some reason had a very divisive head sculpt. I never had an issue with Ronan's head sculpt. I thought it was fantastic and I still do. Anyway, standing next to Iron Man, he looks really good. He is a little bit shorter. I do still attest that the Mark 85 is slightly too tall, just like all of the other Iron Man figures. But that's because I've had to extend his legs just a little bit, and I'll tell you why a little bit later in the video. But for now, just know that you have to do it to get him looking as seamless as he does here, which makes him slightly too tall. But granted, if you put him in a dynamic pose, you can definitely pose that away. So in my display, that's something I'll be doing. And here we have Natasha Romanoff, aka Black Widow. Does this look a little bit weird? Potentially. She is slightly too short, but then again, you can pose it away like I just said. You can have Iron Man in a repulsor blasting pose, Black Widow in the air doing a somersault shooting her gun. It would look incredible. So yes, standing straight up and down, potentially she's a little bit undersized, he's a little bit oversized, and it all comes together making them look a little bit weird. But at the end of the day, am I going to be losing any sleep? No. Not really. Now this is the shot that I personally was waiting for. Here we have the War Machine Mark VI next to Iron Man. This looks absolutely incredible. 
incredible the latest versions of War Machine and Iron Man standing side by side. They look incredibly different next to each other. There's so much more bulk and definition on the War Machine and then so much more of a sleek, glossy, sports car look to Iron Man. It really does personify the characteristics of both Rhodey and Tony perfectly in their suits of armor. This looks amazing. I cannot wait to have them displayed together on the shelf. Now I know we are getting the Iron Patriot from Endgame, and that guy looks completely different once again. I cannot wait to see him. But for now, these two standing together is kind of quintessential Iron Man and War Machine. And to be honest, I'm loving how this looks. And here, of course, we have the 85 next to Rocket. Rocket is small, as he has been whenever I've done a comparison with him. This works really nicely. It's Endgame Rocket, my personal favorite version of Rocket. And these two look really good standing together. And here we have Cap and Iron Man standing side by side. Yes, this is the D23 version. I will be picking up the standard one because of course I was going to pick it up. A lot of people have been asking me. I'll be picking it up and reviewing it, comparing it to this guy right here because it does appear that they've made some subtle changes. But for the meantime, he will be standing in as my endgame Cap and he does a pretty darn good job. I love the way these two look standing side by side. Honestly, I personally cannot wait to get that Thor figure and complete the trio here because already I'm getting goosebumps. I'm tempted to go back and watch Endgame once again because of all the awesomeness that's standing in front of me right here. And here we have Armored Thanos standing alongside Iron Man. I mean, we kind of already knew what this would look like because we've seen the Mark 50, which is basically the same height as this guy next to Thanos here, but this really does work. Thanos is big and imposing and beefy and he looks really good. I cannot wait to see what kind of crazy poses posing with Peter does cook up for his Thanos versus his Mark 85. It's going to be a treat, I'm sure. Now for a quick budget Stark trademark weight test, here we have the scales and off to the side this is the Mark 50 just for a control point. We do have 754 grams, not super light by any means, but comparing it to the Mark 85, as you can see this guy is a hefty boy. He weighs in at 886 grams, closer to a kilo, and that's because in my opinion this guy has more die cast. He feels super high quality and super sturdy. And and I think this right here kind of proves it. Now I have noticed something rather interesting in the instructions. As you can see when it shows off the head sculpt, it shows off that new Mark 50 replacement head sculpt, not the one that actually comes in the set. Therefore, yes, I may be wearing my tinfoil hat here, but were Hot Toys always planning on offering this replacement service and we're always going to ship this particular head sculpt with the Mark 85? Who knows? Maybe that's what happened. Maybe this instruction manual was just prepared way in advance. Who can say? But still, that's rather interesting. Now, they've actually done something rather unique with the Mark 85. If you remove the Iron Man helmet, you actually do remove this neck collar attachment as well. So this is the one that actually comes installed with the helmet. You can see there's a magnet right there. Then you take this one, which also has a magnet in the front. This is the one that you use with the head sculpt. And I may as well show off what the Mark 50 head sculpt looks like on the body because I personally haven't seen it yet. And I have to say, yeah, that kind of does the trick. It works quite nicely. And of course, removing this one and installing the one that comes with the figure itself. Don't worry, you'll see this a little bit more towards the end of the video. But for now, this is what it looks like on the body. And yeah, I mean, from certain angles, I can definitely see the likeness, but but from others, it looks really, really off. Still don't know why this head sculpt had to happen. Just going over articulation. Now bear in mind, this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm gonna be a little bit more careful. This guy is chock full of tiny little moving pieces, die cast, as well as beautiful glossy paint apps. So do be careful, please, when you're moving the joints on your Iron Man, be sure that none of the pieces are colliding with one another and therefore scratching off the paintwork. Now let's start off with the head sculpt first. It is on a separate neck. There's one ball joint in the head, then one at the base of the neck. And as you can see, he does get a fairly decent range of motion, both back, forward, side to side, swivel, and of course, pivot as well. The arms themselves can be pulled out ever so slightly to get a 
bigger or wider range of motion, I do advise pulling the shoulder pad up first, then moving the arms up as you can see right there. Same thing going forward. Swivel at the upper bicep and also a butterfly joint as well. Double bend there for the elbow. It's like the Mark 50 where the bicep can actually move out of the way to get an even deeper bend there. Now you do have a regular Iron Man style ball joint for the wrist itself. Now the torso, as you can see, does have a significant gap. You can of course pull it out and get an even greater range of motion going forward, back, swivel and pivot side to side. You can of course collapse it all back up and it'll hide the unsightly crevices. The legs themselves can also be pulled down multiple clicks. As you can see, this one compared to that one, it's sitting a lot lower. I do advise moving the panels out of the way first, legs going forward, legs going out, swivel at the upper thigh, double bend there of course at the knee, and finally down at the feet, a regular Iron Man style joint, plus of course, toe articulation. Just going over the three cool and three annoying things about the Mark 85. The first annoying thing is that huge unsightly gap in the torso, and no I don't have it pulled apart there, it's just the way it sits. If you push this panel down, then it creates a gap at the front, so you kinda just have to live with having a big crevice right underneath that panel right there. The second annoying thing, and by all means it may not bother some of you, but it's the fact that these are spring-loaded. I far prefer it when they put it on an arm and a ball joint, so you can literally pull it out of the way, move the arm freely, and then place it back in place. This one always wants to spring right back down and collide with all of the armor right up here. The third annoying thing is if you leave the legs in the basic neutral position, it pops all of this stuff out of the way and you can't really collapse it all the way down flush. You can see this one isn't sitting flush, whereas this one is. No matter how hard you try in the basic neutral position, it literally won't sit flat. You have to pull it down one click, then all of this stuff can collapse up nicely. But honestly, the Mark 85 is tall enough. I really don't like the fact we have to make use of that drop down joint just to get all of this stuff to sit nice and flush. The first cool thing about the Mark 85, and I know I was just complaining about this two seconds ago, but it's not the way this works, it's the way it looks. You can see it's pretty much as seamless as you can get. This time there aren't any gaps whatsoever at the shoulders. It's been a bugbear for a long time for a lot of people with Iron Man figures. They don't like the shoulder gap, but this one seems to have pretty much eliminated it. There's a teeny tiny little bit up here, but honestly, this guy looks pretty dark seamless. The second cool thing is the inclusion of the Tony Stark version of the Nano Gauntlet. Honestly, they could have just straight up not included this at all and made you buy the Mark 85 battle damage figure. But they didn't, here it is in the box, so for a lot of people, this I'm sure will be their only Mark 85, and you're not missing out on a key accessory such as this. The third cool thing is a bit of a hidden feature with the lightning refocuser. If you take a black light LED and shine it on it, you can see it does glow quite nicely. I don't honestly think this is something that Hot Toys mentioned on Facebook, but I know someone tested it out and posted their results, and yeah, it does work. The paint that they've used on the silver sections does react quite nicely to the blacklight LED. It's a really cool feature. Does it mean that a lot of people will probably make use of it? Honestly, I don't think so, but the fact that they didn't include LEDs but still had the foresight to do this, I think is a really nice touch by Hot Toys. Just wrapping up on the Mark 85. Now I've told you a couple of times that throughout the course of this video, at the end of it, I would be telling you if this is now my favorite all-time Iron Man figure, in one sig scale. And I guess it's time to come clean. Yeah, he really is. I don't know what it is about the Mark 85. He just works for me. I love the color scheme. He's pretty much the most comic book accurate Iron Man suit of armor that we've seen in the MCU. So I really like that. The paint applications are sublime. They are super well done. But there's also a little bit of pitting in the right places to make this guy look even more realistic. Plus, he's super well engineered. When he's in crazy dynamic poses, you can see panels moving around so you can kind of get into those poses. Whereas if he's just standing there straight up and down, he's super clean and super elegant. And I really like how it looks. Also, he's chock full of die cast. He's one of the heavier Iron Man figures in 1-6 scale, so that really does help its case as well. It all comes together to make, for me, my new favorite 1-6 scale Iron Man figure. But... There is a big but, the head sculpt. 
it's gonna have to be up to you whether or not that's reason enough not to pick up the figure. For me personally, I display all of my Iron Man figures with the helmet on. Yes, I know, I know, those of you heading down to the comment section, they still should focus on getting that head sculpt right. It's included in the package. I absolutely agree, but I'm just giving you my reasoning as to why I don't really care. Plus, I already have the Mark 50, so I can use that head sculpt with this guy anyway. That is the superior sculpt. Another plus, they are fixing it. They're replacing it with that Mark 50 head sculpt anyway, so you don't really have anything to worry about. That other Tony Stark head sculpt won't really be seeing the light of day again, in my personal opinion. And trust me, Hot Toys have learned from this. The Battle Damage Mark 85 will have to come with an absolutely beautiful Tony Stark head sculpt, otherwise there will be rioting in the streets, I'm sure. But overall, I'm still in love with the Mark 85. It's a beautiful suit of armor. It's super well executed. It's just that one thing, that one head sculpt, which is throwing a lot of people off. Trust me, it's not a super huge deal. When you get the Mark 51 on your Mark 85, you're going to be perfectly happy. I still absolutely recommend picking up this release. I mean, how could you not? It's pretty much the final Iron Man suit from the MCU. Yes. There is the battle damage version, but this one, in my opinion, is the more iconic of the two. It can go in a bunch more scenes with your other figures, whereas that other one is super scene specific to when, of course, Tony Stark does the snap. That's really cool, but for me, this one's just a little bit more versatile. Now, I picked up mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They're in stock and ready to ship right now. They do have 12-month installment plans now available if you're a fan of paying off your figures over time. Also, while you are down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.